Right on cue. So we'll go ahead and jump in here. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for attending. Um, and as the kind of title of this um, webinar indicated, this will be kind of a review of what you already saw online and we'll have the opportunity to take questions that anyone has. Um, so we're really glad you're here and this is the first kind of live version we're doing of this. So um, bear with us, give us feedback and let us know how we can better support you. We'll go ahead and get started with introductions. So Hugh, I know you'll be in and out tonight. Do you want to kick us off with introductions of yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Hugh McAdam. For those of you that uh, I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, I am U.S. Rowling's Referee Program Associate. Um, so I'm sure you guys have received some emails from me at this point. Um, if there are any referee questions that go through, uh, that come up as we go through our presentation this evening, feel free to throw them in the chat box and I'll do my best to answer them. Awesome. Thanks, you. Jess, do you want to go for it? Yes, it looks like my Zoom actually has to reopen in order for me to share the slides. So I can't share the first part. Okay. I can do that. Okay. Do you want to just go ahead and introduce yourself, Jess? Yes. Um, so my name is Jess Jackson, um, and I serve as the DEI associate working with um, working with Jenny and the rest of the community team. Um, super excited to be here. Awesome. And I think everyone probably knows Sarah, but Sarah, go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining tonight. Uh, I see a good list of referees and LOCs on here. Uh, for this super important training that we're all doing. But if you don't know me, my name's Sarah McAuliffe. I'm the director of competition with U.S. Rowing. Um, I'm lucky enough to work alongside everybody on this call um, and have a team of three more people that work on the competition team, being uh, Jacob Robinson, Allison Boyd, and Reggie Robinson. Um, so big thank you to you all for just partnering with us and making sure our events are running smoothly um, and you know making sure that the members are getting what we need to, them to get. Our day-to-day -day is working very closely with the community team. Um, so all of our goals here are to ensure that our participants who are coming to our regattas, our spectators, our vendors, our referees, our LOCs are in a welcoming environment and they're an environment that they're proud of as well. Um, and like I said, we're working day in and day out with the community team, uh, with Jess and Jenny to make sure that we are accomplishing all of that. So. Again, taking a step back and just a big thank you for all of you to committing to making sure that we're providing that welcoming environment. Um, and let, let us know from a competition standpoint too, that when we're boots on the ground at the regatta, how we can continue to improve that, uh, both for you all and for any attendees. Um, like you mentioned, I will be here throughout the presentation, so I'll be happy to ask questions as needed, but thanks again for being collaborative. Anything. Thank you, Sarah. Um, for those of you who I haven't met yet, my name is Jenny Trays. I'm the head of community engagement here at US Rowing. Been here just over two years. Um, and that was kind of the uh start of this community engagement team where um our team is focused on our inclusion efforts across the organization. So we get to partner with everyone at US Rowing, including the competition team learning and development, um, our camps programs, safeguarding, um, marketing communication, the list goes on. I rode for two years at, or for four years at Bucknell University. Um, and I spent 10 years at Row New York. My work has, my career has really been dedicated to uh, making sports a more accessible place for everyone. And, um, you know, obviously we all share a love of rowing here and, um, want more and more people to enjoy it and stay in the sport. And I'm really excited to, um, you know, talk about this topic with you um, tonight. So thank you again for being here and right on cue. Thank you so much. So um, kind of the plan for the evening. We want to review some of U.S. Rowing's strategic kind of plans um, and how regattas fit into that review some key components of the training that you've been through online, and then share additional resources and opportunities um, 
where we can support you or you can learn more or you can just collaborate more with our team. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. So if you haven't seen it yet, um, U.S. Rowing completed a strategic planning process in 2023, which I just dropped into the chat. And what came out of that was really what's important to the organization. Um, and that's these three pillars. Um, experience, a commitment that provides exceptional benefits, experiences, and resources to our members. Inclusion, dedication to fostering growth and creating an environment that is welcoming, fair, and accessible to all. And performance, provides support to our high-performance athletes in the pursuit of excellence on the world stage. Um, this is not something that we kind of put in a plan and have shelved. Um, for the time being uh, or for the next few years, this is how the organization talks about our goals, sets our goals, hopefully achieves all of our goals. It's how we allocate funding. It's how we talk about our priorities internally and externally. It's something that every person on the team can really speak to. Um, so we are excited to share this more with you and see how you can help um, kind of be extensions of these pillars and these values across the country when it comes to executing regattas um, this spring and, and on an ongoing basis. So the next slide, just a few examples of how you may see these pillars show up in rowing. Um, and this is not a comprehensive list, but just a few examples I pulled from our, our plans. Um, so this training, uh, as an example, is part of that plan. So we, our goal is to provide more educational opportunities, learning, resources for regatta leadership, for staff, and for membership across the board. You may be familiar with the launch, which is our new online learning platform. Um, that is a key component of all of this, um, you know, providing of resources to our membership. We are committed to putting out very soon, I think in the next couple of months, an RFP for 2026 and beyond competition venues. So we are investing in and exploring new venues to host large scale regattas, investment in learning and development for coaches and leaders, dedicated referee support. Um, so that's why we have Hugh on the team, which is exciting, and a growth strategy to support and grow the referee core. Reimagining competition with new formats, experiences, and disciplines. I think we're all really excited for um, and looking forward to Rowfest this summer as a key example of that. Increased scholarship program for athletes and coaches. So we will um, continue to grow that program to support athletes within our camp system from youth development uh, programming all the way up to U23 selection camp. And coaches, we provide scholarships to level two and three certification and conferences um, across the country and virtually to support professional development for coaches. And then finally, the launch of the United We Row grant program to support organizations and provide necessary resources for their inclusion work um, across the country. So those are a few examples. So how does regattas kind of fit into this? I think everyone at U.S. Rowing and probably everyone tuning in sees um, regattas as an incredible opportunity to represent U.S. Rowing and our values. Um, it's an incredible way for people to really feel what rowing is all about. Of course, they get to compete and show off all the work they've put in. They get to win medals. They get to stand on the podium. But our goal is to really ensure that regattas are a positive experience even when people lose, right? Even if they rode the worst race of their life, but how can they walk away from the regatta and feel good about it? Um, I would love if, if oh, sorry, just go back one slide. If people want to answer this question, I guess using the Q&A or the chat, whatever is accessible to you. How do you all want people to feel when they walk away from a regatta? Let's see if we get any engagement here. Wonder if we're able to see 
Does anyone see anything? <laughs> Not yet. Ah, oh, there's a hand. Uh, Bessie's raising her hand. I wonder, Sarah, if we have chat or Q and A open. Do you know? I can go and look for. Yeah, it is. seems like maybe the chat's inaccessible. Um, Jess, if you want to pop in there. Okay. Oh, let's um, let's just quickly allow um, like guys, try to keep it to ten seconds or less. Um, Betsy and Tom. Okay, so Betsy, I'm gonna allow you to talk for a sec. Betsy, are you there? I was just raising my hand to let you know that the chat was disabled. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, do you wanna add anything about how you want people to feel? Oh, well, they... we want people to feel happy, like they had a great day. Um, and just had a wonderful experience and Amazing. we're well taken care of. Awesome. Love that. Couldn't agree more. Thank you. And we'll try to get this chat going here. Tom, did you want to jump in with how you want people to feel? Um, you know, as both a, a coach and as, mostly as a referee on this one, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think one of the best compliments as a referee uh, is for when the participants say, you know, we actually didn't even know that you were there mm -hmm. um, and that you blend in so well and it was a fair race and that they don't necessarily note our presence, but that that is actually a compliment. So, Because everything goes smoothly and safely and it's fair. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for your contribution. And feel free now that we have the chat going um, to share with others feeling happy and know that they have been treated fairly. Um, and we want participants to feel it was worth the time and money and interested in coming again and next time. Yes, we want them coming back and that they had a fair chance at competing. Awesome. Yes, we want people to leaving a regatta to feel that their expectations were far exceeded and racing was fair and safe. Yes, thank you so much. Um, cool, we can go on. Great, so in terms of key components of the training, I guess before we jump into that, um, I think, you know, my our goal here tonight was to underscore some of the key pieces of what you've already seen online and then give an opportunity to answer questions that you have. Um, and I think for all of us, it's really important to know that we are a continual work in progress on the front of inclusion and making rowing accessible, both as an organization, as a referee corps, and as individuals. We make mistakes, we learn, we have to adjust, we have to adapt. Um, so I would say that it's not gonna be perfect. And everyone on this call has been invited because you have a leadership position in rowing. So that's just a huge opportunity to um, make rowing better, make someone's experience better and keep them in the sport. Um, especially as we all share this love of this really unique, um, unique sport. So we're really just asking for people's, um, individual and organizational kind of reflection, intentionality and progress. Um, we get feedback as you can imagine as an organization, um, across the board, including from regatta experiences, we're doing a, a much better job of asking people how they feel and asking for feedback. Um, so I wanted to share just quickly a, a bit of that feedback. Um, and this is like cumulative over, uh, you know, a couple of years. So there's, um, not going to be any names or anything, but, some feedback that we've we've received from regattas include inappropriate language by regatta leaders, yelling um, and voice raising by referees, announcers commenting on people's looks, jokes about athlete weight, including inside the weigh-in tent, 
And having athletes take an issue to a leader on site at a regatta and then kind of minimizing it or blowing it off. Um, so as I said, we're all a work in progress, but hope that we can be open to this feedback and this kind of concept of um, just trying to make people's experience better with our personal interactions and humanizing um, the rowers, coaches, and volunteers. So just to kind of underscore some of the key pieces, um, as we all know, DEI, quote unquote, is a hot topic in our country. And we think that really defining it um, and sharing what we mean by it, kind of, um, we think people will get behind the concept. So when we talk about diversity at U.S. Rowing, that means the unique qualities about people not limited to gender, race, ethnicity, or sexual orientation. It's really everything that makes someone unique. So, you know, your veteran status, people who are neurodivergent, age, um, whether you are a recreational rower or a competitive rower, all of these things fit into diversity. Equity um, is about providing support and resources for individuals on a need basis. So it is not the same as equality, which means everybody gets the same thing. So giving support for those who need it in a way that is thoughtful, individualized, and making accommodations. And then finally, inclusion is um, how an indiv individual perceives themselves as a valued member, the ability to show up as their authentic self. For us, it's, you know, does an individual feel a sense of belonging and do they feel valued by coaches, um, teammates, referees, U.S. rowing staff, the list goes on, everyone in our sport. Our goal, and I think we all share this, is to Keep everyone who's currently in rowing in rowing for as long as possible and bring new people in. Next slide, please. So um, I will go ahead and drop this link in the chat as well. This is the DEI specific strategic plan that came out of um, planning. So you can read the summary version there, including some of the data that came out of uh, an assessment um, that an outside organization did with us. Um, and these are the four main goals of our DEI strategic plan. Create a welcoming environment, support clubs and athletes, invest in coaching and leadership, and enhance the high performance pipeline. We're the national governing body and our we are not the ones delivering rowing on a day-to-day -day basis, boots on the ground across the country. That's where all of you come in. And that's where we see the biggest opportunity for all of you. Um, probably you can, you can help us tackle every one of these four goals, but the biggest one that we see is create a welcoming environment. So that's having positive experiences with everyone you interact with. It's you know, signage at regattas. It's the things I know that referees take so seriously. It's fairness, it's safety. Um, it's having a, an understanding and an empathy for rowers. Um, so we're really excited that you're here to talk about this. Um, next, we would highlight safeguarding. So I'm sure all of you know by now that we are kind of redefining what safety looks like at U.S. Rowing. Um, and including psychological and emotional safety in kind of the broader bucket of safeguarding. So safeguarding is all the measures to promote and protect the welfare of all participants. And it truly takes all of us, um, especially when you're factoring in the emotional and psychological safety. Um, so it really broadens our role as referees, L as LOC partners, as U.S. rowing staff Um the, you know, this new definition. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'll go ahead and drop this in the chat, but our website now reflects safeguarding and some additional resources that we are highlighting, um, including the athlete helpline, which is a misnomer because it's not just for athletes. It is for coaches, referees, anyone in rowing who, you know, needs some emotional support. Um, 
it's not for emergencies, obviously, um, but it is, you know, if you want to chat about an experience you had and want to understand what your, your options might be, that's a really good resource and it's anonymous for everyone. And um, we also highlight on the website now our partnership with Reride Together, which provide additional resources and support for prevention of sexual assault and misconduct in sport. Um, I think you can go to the next slide, please. So your role, um, again, this is review of the training, so I'm not going to go in depth, but um, reporting, really understand what the mechanisms are for reporting misconduct or noncompliance of the code of conduct. I think probably you all know the, the code of conduct and the rules of rowing way better than I do. Um, I know them very well, um, but I think you all have been in the sport and, you know, take that stuff seriously. So um, that's kind of number one is know it and then recognize the misconduct and noncompliance and then know um, what to do. First and foremost, listen when someone confides in, in you about an incident or an experience that they had. So, you know, the training goes into active listening, but that's, you know, truly listening, not thinking about what you'll say next, no judging, no trying to resolve the issue unless that's truly what they're asking for. Check your understanding and make sure you kind of summarize it back to them um, to make sure that you're hearing things correctly. Um, and then, you know, our team is mostly on the ground across the country at regattas, um, but tell someone at U.S. Rowing reach out if we're not on site, but they will really understand and know and kind of guide you in the right direction of what steps to take um, in terms of reporting, solving any, you know, crises that are right in front of you, ensuring that the person is out of harm um, and dealing with any consequences or thing that things that may come up. Um, and then, you know, the training goes into also steps you can take if you're accused of harming a person. I think, again, listening is huge on that front. Um, and seeing if you can provide a solution if that's what the person is seeking, acknowledging what may have happened, acknowledging their feelings, even if it wasn't your intention. Um, so happy to share that there's more details in that in the online version as well. And then, of course, there are options beyond the regatta. Safe sport reporting with U.S. rowing or grievance procedures if it's serious, athlete helpline. And I, I know that there is also um, a referee complaint process as well that's not listed here. Um, so those are some of the additional resources. And then, um, as I mentioned all review of the training, but just a few things to highlight here. These are all exam con more concrete examples of what inclusion could look like at a regatta. Um, you know, creating a welcoming environment. This is more for the kind of regatta organizers, but what does, what does the advertisement of your regatta look like? Whose images are up there? What language are we using? Um, when it comes to increasing accessibility. Are there um, physically accessible spaces at your regatta site for wheelchair access? Are the bathrooms accessible to all people um, on site? Name pronunciation, we're, we're not gonna get every single name correct. We're, we're human and names are often new to us, but I think just humanizing that and humanizing the rower on the other end, um, we can do our best. Be an active bystander, so step in if you feel the need to, if you notice something. Um, and then being aware that we all have blind spots. We all have biases. We all have implicit associations when it comes to people who are different than us. Um, so I think these are some tips that can help in this work. Um, yeah, I think, you know, a lot of like the rules of rowing and the rules of competition and the rules of sport in general are very 
cut and dry, black and white. And I think a lot of this work when it comes to inclusion isn't, could be, I mean, there's definitely black and white um, of like right and wrong in this work, but there's a lot of gray area too. And I think the kind of the purpose of this training is to think about how to create an environment that we want our kids and our grandkids and our moms and the people that we care about most, our partners to kind of be a part of, um, how would they, how would we want them to be treated? Um, we want them to be treated with care and compassion and kindness and recognized for their positive attributes. Um, so that is that if you want to, and then, um, you know, these are great questions. Feel free to go ahead and screenshot this if it's useful to you. These are also in the training, but, you know, reflections for at the end of a long regatta day. I know you want to think about the regatta more once you're off site. Um, just kidding. I know you guys have very long days, but you know, what is the environment you created for members? How can you improve it in the future? Were you able to engage with a diverse group of people who were present? What is something you can do next time to improve a participant experience? Um, if you had to report an incident or a situation, what went well and what could you improve next time? What do you need from US Rowing to improve your interactions at regattas? We are so eager to help on this front um, and want your feedback. So two pieces of feedback we've gotten kind of in general, but then also based on the training that we wanted to address. Um, one was this question that's come up in the last couple of years of like, why Florida? Why Oklahoma City? Why are we going to these places that, you know, <clears throat> don't align with U.S. Rowing's values of inclusion? It's a fair question. The answer, though, is that, you know, we do not believe in a boycott. We believe in, like, most of our fellow NGVs and other sports that are struggling with this challenge of having limited places that can host, concurrently host the large scale regattas that we need. Um, we we want to show up with our values. We believe in engaging with local communities, the local organizing committees, local nonprofit organizations that support the communities that are being kind of targeted in some ways in these um, states or cities and ensuring that our sites are as safe as possible on site. Um, and we, we take many measures to work with these local organizations to ensure that athletes and coaches feel safe, you know, while they are in town, we recommend inclusive restaurants, things to do, places to stay outside of these locations. Um, and we have to remember that as the governing body, we do serve members in these places and they are so eager and excited um, to have us there and boycotting um, would be really alienating some of those uh, members. And it's a priority of ours to ensure that we have LGBTQ plus organizations on site and show visibility and give out resources and say that we support all members of the community. So that was one piece of feedback. Um, and then the other is there was specific recommendations in the training around um, avoiding gendered terms for rowers. Um, so not using Mr. and Mrs. when it comes to calling out um, rowers at the starting line, or I guess on the course at all. And this is because, you know, with our gender inclusion policy and our open gender category, there are limited places for non-binary athletes to compete. So you don't fully know when you're addressing a, you know, a men's race or a women's race, what someone's gender is. And I guess the kind of recommendation from the community team is to kind of avoid those gender gendered terms completely and go with rower last name. Um, and I know that fully contradicts specific um kind of language in the referee manual um 
So I think like we're all grown ups. We can uh, kind of use our best judgment here, but um, that is kind of our recommendation. So I hope that helps and happy to answer questions on that. Awesome. So ways to go deeper. I will throw a few of these in the chat, but we are doing a good amount to engage the community and we want your feedback. Um, we value your feedback. We want you to be part of this movement because we know we can't do it alone. Um, so I'll just mention a few things. I would definitely encourage everyone to take some time to read that strategic plan, especially the data piece. People are not experiencing rowing in the positive way that we experienced rowing. Like we're all working in rowing. Um, and there are different experiences happening across our sport that we can actively be part of that change to make it positive and move in the right direction. You can take the United We Row pledge, which I am posting here. Um, and if you have feedback on what we could list out for referees, we are always open to updating that or adding to it. You can explore the DEI resources in the launch. There are additional trainings like opening the boathouse doors and nine things you should know about DEI in, in rowing. There is a sexual um, assault and misconduct prevention and resources guide by We Ride Together. And these are all kind of interactive modules. And then you can also sign up for the United We Row newsletter as well. So I will go ahead and post that here. And if that United We Row is new to you, that is basically our brand for our inclusion efforts so that we can draw more attention to it so that athletes, coaches, referees, organizations can take advantage of um, what we're offering under that brand and that umbrella. So that is it. What questions do people have? Um, hey, there's a couple in here. Yes. Um, I'm going to start off with, Tom had a question. Is U.S. Rowing planning to provide handouts or posters or materials at U.S. Rowing sponsored regattas about these issues? Um, so I, I'm thinking non-owned events. What are we doing for the registered regatta audience? So I'm really glad you asked about that, Tom. There is this incredible um, sanctioned regatta toolkit for regatta leaders that Alyssa from our membership team has put together um, with, you know, in collaboration with Tom Rooks, head of safety, Jewel Zane, head of um, membership, and myself to pull in safety, insurance, um, and inclusion. So that hopefully will be like on the website and in people's hands by next week. And I'm happy to follow up with this group about that. Um, when it comes to actual materials on this work, we are at some regattas that are not owned, but not all, I would say. So Head of the Charles, obviously a big one. Um, San Diego Crew Classic, we will have people on site but not all, we can we can probably work on that front. Great, thank you. Uh, Eric has a question here, bear with me, I'm gonna read it all. Uh, regarding emotional distri distress security, one increasing trend with the younger generation is that due to helicopter parenting and being overprotective, uh, some young people are poorly equipped to handle everyday challenges and what would previously be considered a normal obstacle. So to what degree should we factor that in and try to accommodate them? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I think that we don't know the reason why necessarily people might be reacting the way they do. They might be an athlete who is neurodiverse, who is triggered very easily to things that go on. It might be an athlete who had a really rough morning and is set off in a specific way. I think that, you know, it depends, like so much of this just depends on the situation. Like I think when it comes to a safety issue, you're going to, you're going to have to do what you have to do to keep athletes, coaches, yourselves safe. Um, 
when it comes to things that are maybe not a physical safety issue and you can take the time to try to understand calmly, um, ask questions in an understanding and non-judgmental way. I think that is what I would go for. Jess, Sarah, do you guys want to add anything? Hugh? Jen, yeah. Jenny, I would echo everything. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jess. No, go ahead, Sarah. I would echo everything you were saying. Um, as you mentioned, like, Priority is uh, safety and fairness. And obviously the individual as a referee or as a regatta leader or whatever, insert role there, um, whatever you feel is in a reasonable effort that you feel like you can also personally handle in that situation. Like we, we are not expecting everybody to be equipped to the highest level in XYZ area outside of that already assigned role, such as referee, LOC director, et cetera. So know your limitations too. And if you're at a point where you need additional help, please call for whether it's medic on site or additional US rowing staff, regatta staff, whatever that may be there. Yeah, I think both of those are really good points. Um, I would just add on to like give the kids grace, give yourself grace, um, because I do think that uh, everybody is learning as well. Like a lot of these kids are still learning. Um, and as Jenny was saying, we never know what someone might be going through or what happened that day, um, what their stories are, because everyone has a story. So, um, yep. I mean, we've also seen the trends, like kids are suffering right now in terms of mental health and they just need the most support we could possibly offer them. Um, so I think when there's space, grace is always good. Um, but again, you guys are the experts in terms of safety. I think that is number one, keeping kids physically safe. Mm -hmm. um, okay, cool. Yeah, there's another question in here for name pronunciation. It would really help if during athlete registration, there is a field for phonetic pronunciation and that this would be available for the LOC and officials. I know you guys are doing a lot of work on this, Jenny and Jess, so. I feel like we added that, didn't we, Sarah? Correct. Yes. Yep. Okay. I think maybe you know more at this point, like, but I think we did add that as part of athlete registration. Yep, definitely. So uh, on the member portal, when an athlete does register now, um, they're able to do a lot more things within that, such as add phonetic spelling, add their pronouns, um, from a fun perspective, add in their like announcer notes, all of those details that any athlete can go in at any time and do so. So one from a US Ring perspective, we're pushing, hey athletes, get get your information out there so we can best equip the, like you're saying, Eric, the referees, the LOCs, the announcers to make sure we're portraying accurate information out there. Um, the hard part still continues to be ensuring that athletes are filling this out. So, you know, we'll continue to push. Um, but if there's coaches out there, uh, boathouse directors out there, please do, do urge your athletes to do so. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, another question from Eric here. Since there are still male race categories versus female race categories, uh, in mixed categories with rules regarding composition, should officials always assume that all boats and athletes are eligible, um, even though there have been cases where coaches make illegal substitutions? Mm -hmm. um, the second part to that is, or if an official has questioned if someone is in the right category, how should they go about forwarding their concern? Mm -hmm. um, I can touch on some of that too, Jenny, but let me know. Yeah, no, I think, I mean... I would love to test my knowledge here, but I think it's, yes, assume that everyone in the boat is eligible. And then if there is a question, you're bringing that up um, after competition. But Sarah, why don't you jump in with the official? You're a hundred percent right. So um, I will speak for like all U.S. rowing owned events currently, but a referee should assume that the athletes that are entered into the boat have been verified by U.S. rowing that, yes, those athletes should be racing. 
Um, it's our staff's job to make sure that one, Regatta Central is set up so that the technical limitations are in place as needed, um, age, et cetera. But yes, therefore, the referee should be able to assume that the right person is in the right boat at the right time. Um, from a, a non-owned U.S. rowing event, so an event that competition is not at, Jenny's not at, Jess is not at, um, it, this is a definitely a, a strong conversation with the regatta director that you're working with. Um, I would say erring on the side of what I just spoke to. Um, but this is a conversation that definitely should be brought up of who is verifying that point. Um, awesome. I think we have one more question in here. So if you have more, feel free to jump, uh, put them in. Um, there is a question on how rampant se sexual misconduct is in our sport. We've had a great deal of training on this and how pervasive is it? Mm -hmm. Tom, it's a good question. Um, I am not equipped to share like exactly our safe sport cases and all of that. Um, but I can share that we just today had a staff training um, with our partners that we ride together and I'll drop their, um, their website in the chat here. They are helping us produce resources and materials and swag. So you'll see them around this spring, but just the general stats of this are staggering. Um, on the homepage here, it says 120 people will be affected by one predator before that predator is caught. 50% of athletes have experienced sexual harassment or abuse. And a quarter, one in four college athletes will be sexually harassed or assaulted by a coach or other athletic authority figure by the time they graduate. So those are some stats. I don't like we know that rowing is not exempt from that behavior, unfortunately. Um, so hopefully we can all just up our game in terms of prevention. I hope that helps. Great. Thank you. Um, another question here from Eric. There are several world politic events issues that are spilling over into the area of diversity. Some examples he listed, Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Palestine, uh, et cetera. What sort of guidance does U.S. Rowing have if any on of these issues becomes prominent at a regatta? Um, we provided some guidance. I mean, we talked internally as a team last year. I think like unless things are becoming, you know, a mob or violent or um, you know, hate speech type area, things that are, you know, harming people. Um, I think that we, you know, support however people support these, these topics. Um, we can follow up with more guidance, Eric, if, if you want that, but I think, you know, we have had these conversations as an internal team for especially some of um, these like bigger topics of, you know, protests or, you know, resulting in violence or things like this and how we would handle. Um, but they are complicated issues for people. And I think like people feel differently about them. I don't know. I don't want to weigh in on the politics of it. I think it ultimately comes down to people's safety. Mm -hmm. definitely yeah the only thing i'll contribute um from a regatta operational end is uh we take the like the safety plans of a regatta very very seriously there is multiple meetings leading up to every regatta on how we're discussing that um and there's plans for every scenario out there so without going into all the details of this like in full agreement with everything that Jenny said, we are in support of athletes showing who they are. Um, and, but just want to comment on the safety piece too, that we, our goal is to keep everybody safe there. And we're, we're planning that just in case too. Uh, if we have any additional questions, how best to contact you? 
Yes, Jenny already put those in the chat. Um, so emails for Jenny and the community team um, and Jess here. That looks like all the questions currently, Jenny and Jess, but if there's any more, if you guys want to pop it in real quick and we can answer. Um, but I believe this is being recorded. So we will uh, go ahead and share as needed with the greater group too. Mm -hmm. Eric has one final question here. looks like, to what extent should a regatta for U.S. rowing accommodate an athlete's food allergies? Might certain foods be banned from a regatta entirely? Um, as a mom of a toddler who had a food allergy and deals with kids at her school with food allergies, it, it, I don't think a whole regatta would ban um, certain foods, but these parents and athletes kind of know how to navigate their own allergies, I would say. And if that were like a, an enormous deal, I'm sure they would reach out to us through our, um, oh, we didn't talk about that, but through our um, accommodation form for people with disabilities, um, that's something that you all should know. We have a kind of process if people who are athletes or supporters and fans and volunteers need accommodations on site, they can reach out. So that would fit in that category, I think, if it was that extreme. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I just really appreciate you all taking the time to be here. Um, and we would love this to be kind of an ongoing conversation and just really appreciate all you do for the sport and for carrying out our values. So anything else you guys want to say? Just a big thank you. I know we're getting up, uh, into the busy season for the spring and, uh, a lot of the referees I'm sure are either about to jump into their first regatta or have already had a couple. Um, and same with LOCs. I know it's a big role to take on. So yeah, thank you for being partners. Thank you for just being clear of areas where we can kind of continue to tweak and perfect and hopefully make your jobs easier as well. Thank you so much. Have a great night.